In today's video, I'm going to show you tips and techniques on how to design amazing looking funnels. Coming up. So when it comes to creating funnels, what really makes your funnel convert is really good design because what I see most of the time online is funnels that look very similar. And that is because a lot of people just use the basic templates and are really lazy to take the design to the next level and make it unique to them. And as a result, I mean, when people start seeing the same design over and over again, it doesn't really look nice. So what I'm going to do in this video is share with you tips on how to make your funnels look beautiful and professional. All right. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go through a few things here on uh, this landing page that I created and uh, just go with you through the thought process and why I ended up designing it this way. So when I design funnels, the very, very first thing is for me to establish a color palette. Now, the reason why I do this is because colors are used pretty much everywhere. I mean, it's, I mean, if you talk about paintings, um, in fabrics, Colors that work well together make designs look great. Now, there are many tools out there that help us to choose all our colors that work well correctly on our websites or on our projects. The one that I really go for here is called coolers.co. Now, this is a free resource. Yeah, I mean, you can just go ahead and use it absolutely for free. It has a color generator and you can also go in and customize the colors that are produced using this system. So let me show you how this works works. So over here, we can click on start generator. So what happens now is this system here chooses all these colors. Now these colors work well together. So you can just hit the space bar and it will just cycle through the colors that really work well together. So you can see here as I'm going through this, it's choosing all my colors. So what I can do now, let's say I decide to go with this color palette. I can go in and further tweak these colors. So let's say this one here is a bit too, is a bit too much. I can click here and I can go into the shades, right? So I can really go down here and choose this shade instead. Now, even though I'm changing this shade here, it doesn't mean that uh, it has messed up how my colors are working because this is still on the same color spectrum. So this is really fine. And what I can also do here is I can move it around by just dragging it like this so that I can see what it looks like next to other colors, okay? So I can also add in more colors if I need to. So if I click on this plus button, I can add even more colors. So if I need to create a color palette that where, that has uh, more than five colors, that's, I mean, how I would do it. And uh, you can just keep adding all your colors here for your color palette. All right, so now that I've shown you how to change the color, there's also other ways to go in and uh, make some changes to your colors. So here, as I mentioned, we have the shades, so we can click around here, change the shades. And what you can also do here is, in fact, let me come to, uh, to this one. I can save this color here to my favorites, which again is uh, very good because once I save it to my favorites, it means that it's easier for me to find. And you can also save the whole color palette. Now, once you save the color palette, you want to come back to your website and add it in your page builder. Now, with Divi, you go into your theme options and that's where you'd add your colors. So once you add them there, it makes it easier for you to find your colors as you're designing your website. So if we take a look at this landing page here, we see that the colors are used. Uh, the colors I used here are colors that are from my color palette. And in a moment, I'll show you. Uh, how I added those colors. So you can see here on the hover states, everything is pretty much following all the colors that I chose from this service here called colors.co. So that will be your stage one. Choose your colors that really work well uh, together. And once you've chosen your colors, you can then add them onto your color palette in your page builder. Now, there are also other ways that you can go in and search for colors. And that is to click here where it says explore. Now, this explore gives you color palettes that are trending. So if you wanted to use uh, any of these, you could just go through here and see what is trending and what works well. So like, I really like this one here. This is really cool. So let's say you really like this one here. You can save the color palette or you can even export it. So this is really, really powerful. So let's view the color palette here. Now you can see we have our hexadecimal values here. So if I click on this one here, again, I can just click to copy 
and then I can just paste it in my theme builder. All right, so back over here, if we take a look at this page here, we can see that we've used great imagery. So you can see here when I scroll down, all my images are not pixelated. They are really, really uh, well taken. Now you may be thinking, well, where would you get these images from? Well, there's two ways. First of all, you can take your pictures yourself or you can use services like Unsplash. Like for example here, uh, Unsplash has quite a lot of images that you can use absolutely for free without worrying about licensing issues. Okay, so let's say you are creating a uh, funnel about, uh, let's say, sports, uh, sports equipment or a sports supplement or even fitness. So I would start off by, let's say, searching for fitness like that. And you can see here all the images are showing up. So let's say it's mainly uh, to do with gym. You can just select gym here and then it just breaks them down to layouts that are to do with the gym. So as you can see here, this one here looks great. So when someone takes a look at this, straight away they know that this is to do with fitness or it's to do with weight training. So all you have to do is to click on download and this will download to your computer and you can use it straight away. So this is how I would find my images. There are also other you know, places like Pexels and Pixabay that are also free, which are similar to what Unsplash does. So that's what I used here. So this was a landing page for a knitting course. So this is how I added this really nice image here. Now let's go into the visual builder and let me show you how these colors were added. So as I mentioned before, the colors are added into your color palette and everywhere you go in to try and design, you are going to see that color palette. So let's, let's go into this module here. So if I go to design and go to, let's say, I need to change this little icon here. You can see my color palette here follows me wherever I go. And this is really powerful. Now, just by clicking that, you can see it has changed. And I can also use, you know, other colors here on my color palette. And all these work great. Now, Divi also has what is known as a color manager. So if I click here on this drop down, you can see here that um, I have even more colors that I could play around with. And all these colors here are going to work really well with my design. So color is very, very important. Images are very, very important. Now let's move on to the third thing and that is your fonts. Now when it comes to fonts, again, this is a design element and uh, fonts can be very difficult to use and choose. So this website here is um, it's for you. Let's say if you're a beginner, you're not sure how to use uh, fonts on your website or on your funnels, you can come over here to featured fonts and see the combinations that work well. And by the way, these fonts here work great because they're also Google fonts, which means they're absolutely free to use. So here you can see you have Laura and Meriwether. So you can use these as your titles and this as your paragraph text. Okay. In fact, your Laura is the, the heading here. So you can scroll through these and see which combinations work. We also have Bescoville here. This is an old school font, which is really nice. We have Rubik. So there's quite a lot of fonts here that you can experiment with and play around with. But this is this can be like your stages for your research to see what fonts look great. Now, if you're designing funnels, let's say for a client, you can go through all these fonts with your client and see which combinations work. And using this as your starting point is great because you can have an idea of how your fonts are going to look. So you can see here we have Nunito and Nunito. Let's see what this looks like. Now, you see, most of the times when I design on my website, I use pop-ins. You know, I'm just lazy like that. So let's change this font here to a totally different one, which I noticed from here. So this is Nunito and Nunito. So let's try this. So I'm going to change my title font here to Nunito. And you, as you can see here, this is a font from uh, Google. I can make it heavy here if I need to. So you can see now it's nice and heavy. I can increase the size or reduce the size just a little bit. And perhaps I could add some letter spacing as well. There we go. I think that looks much better with that letter spacing of about five. In fact, let's bring it down a bit to four. Right. Now let's go to the description text. And same, I'm going to come over here and change it to Nunito. And I'm going to increase the size a little bit. So when it comes to these different fonts that you're going to use, sometimes you may need to do a few adjustments uh, to your line height or even to the actual size of the font to make it look great. So with that, let's just make this uh, semi-bold. So you may need to go in and try them out and see which one works better. But to be honest, 
I think that looks really nice. I like that. All right, so as you can see here, I've just gone in and I've added my font here for my heading and my description text. I may need to also go in here to the button and do the same. So I'm gonna scroll down here and look for my button font and let's change it to Nunito. There we go. Let's make it nice and bold or even heavy. There we go. So that's looking much better now. And as you can see, just by adding those few clicks, I've gone in, I've changed my font, and it looks very, very clean and very, very professional. So you don't wanna be using different types of fonts uh, across your page. I would say go with uh, your main heading and, and your main description text with the same font or different font weights. But if you really have to, then you can use your font pairing, which we get here on this website. So as you can see here, all this font here all this font pairing really works well. And you can see here, Poppins has appeared and it's working with uh, PT Serif. And there we go. And there's also another way of uh, finding which fonts work well together. And there's also some inspiration here that you can have a look at. So here we can go with uh, Sans Serif and Serif. And we can see here, this looks nice as well. Yeah, so I would go, go ahead and try and take a look at uh, these uh, font combinations and see what works great for your projects. And even here, you can see we have even more fonts that works well together. And these are really, really nice. All right, guys, so pretty much that's all I have for you in today's video. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and also don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell notification. By doing so, you'll be notified when I release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.